Hello everyone, so in this lecture let's talk about zig or the cases when the C isn't enough. So for those of you who don't know, let's talk about what zig is first. And zig is the new generation systems programming language and I like to describe it as a modern C. That's because zig is very alike C. First and foremost, it is fully imperative and procedural. Inherently there is no object-oriented programming and for a good reason. That's because there is no hidden complexity in Zig, like hidden vtables or hidden allocations. And hidden vtables are used for stuff like method overloading in object-oriented languages, that you'll commonly find in interfaces and abstract classes. The memory management of Zig is fully manual, uh, that is, there is no borrow checker like in Rust, resource acquisition is initialization like in C++, or garbage collection like in Go. It has no macrosys or generic types, instead we use feature called comp time meta programming, which I believe is a much better alternative than those two. Zig also has a stable ABI and full C compatibility, that is you can use a C shared library within Zig and vice versa. Regarding efficiency, Zig is very memory efficient and fast. Firstly, the speed is commonly compared with C, C++ and Rust, that's because it is compiled to a binary directly and it has no garbage collection. So there is nothing to stop us really. The memory management in Zig is also fully flexible thanks to an allocator abstraction, which allows us to adjust our memory allocation patterns to our workflow specifics. That means that we are no longer locked to a general purpose allocator, we can allocate our memory based on our program needs. For instance, using a pre-allocated buffer on stack, or we can even grab a row operating systems pages, that's because they're just faster to allocate and deallocate. While in C, C++ and Rust, we can't do so, we are locked to a general purpose heap allocator. Let's also talk about Zig dependencies. By default, Zig does not depend on anything, even the libc. And you can find the libc dependency in pretty much any programming language, including the C, C++ or Rust, that's because the Zig standard library is written entirely from scratch, and this often results in a statically linked, extremely small binaries. Let's have a look at an example. Firstly, let's compile the C hello world with GCC OS flag to make it size optimized. The same stuff with Zig, but overly small uh, flag is passed in this case. Then let's inspect the disk sizes and you notice that there is a 4 kilobyte difference in favor of Zig. And if we were to inspect the LDD, we'll see that C Hello World is linked against the libc and Zig Hello World is linked against nothing, so it is a static binary. And the size difference is related to a overhead in which the ELF in C Hello World binary should contain the information how it should link the actual libc. That's why Zig Hello World is actually smaller in this case. I also associate Zig with far less headaches, that's because Zig resolves the common headaches while working with C, those are undefined behaviors. For instance, Zig introduces the support for error handling, and errors should be handled explicitly in Zig. You know, in C, if a developer misses a uh, uh, check for a malloc allocation failure, the program would end up uh, dereferencing an all pointer, which is of course an undefined behavior. And in Zig, this is simply not possible because the errors should be handled explicitly and the compiler would throw an error while compiling the code stating that you should handle those errors. Zig also has a unified build system and package management. So in C, you would learn 101 build system in order to build your project like C, CMake, Mission Ninja or other crap and then glue different dependencies together using git submodules for instance. While in Zig, you can just learn Zig and that'll be it. Zig also has a modern standard library which has a support for efficient memory management that we've discussed prior, asynchronous I.O., threading and other stuff like JSON parsers, uh, data structures, math modules, etc. And once again, if you don't have some feature, you can simply install it using the Zig package management. And so let's summarize. With Zig, just as you would with C, you can build 
small scripts and utility applications, although I think uh, languages like Python, Bash, or Ruby would be a much more better fit for it because they don't require you to have this overhead in terms of efficient memory management and CPU stuff. GUI and rendering software, as well as game engines, mainly because those type of applications depend on the C libraries like libgl or libvulkan, and Zig has a great C of interoperability next to web servers. This is especially true with the newly added async support into the standard library as of Zig 0.15, I guess. Next, the embedded systems. Um, you initially use C for them, but now you can use Zig, and you can build pretty much any application, all while staying safe and extremely efficient in terms of resources. And so let's start learning Zig and actually building projects with it, and the practice would be our best friend in this case.